Hello, guys, and welcome to Tech Talk with Ethan. And today I'm here with Stacy and Cindy. Um, and we'll be talking about stage management and other things related to theater. <laughs> um, so thank you guys for joining me. It's a little weird. We almost always say Cindy and then Stacy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so we, it, we'll get right into it, guys. Um, so uh, I'll have you guys introduce yourselves and uh, tell us um, and how you and what is your spe specialty in theater? Twin? I introduced you first. You oh, that's true. Okay, but you're the oldest. Okay, I'll go first. Uh, I'm Stacy, and we got into theater in high school. We were both um, kind of tricked into it and then fell in love with it, uh, doing props. And from there, I stuck with the tech side. I mean, twins kind of back and forth. Um, and in college, my college professor said, why don't you be a technical director? And I said, I don't know what that is. And he said, you run all the tech stuff, but you don't have to touch everything. And I was like, but I like building and touching things. Uh, but I went in as a technical director um, and got work out of college as assistant technical director and technical director and scenic design and, and all that. So that's what I'm kind of still doing. Uh, mm -hmm. I just left theater uh, about eight months ago and I'm working in a company called 1540 Productions, which does the big set builds for red carpets and the Golden Globe parties and stuff like that. So um, still the same stuff, but different titles and uh, yeah. Yeah, nice. Slightly different viewpoint of building sets for different things. Cool. You forgot to mention you do for a four-year four year old birthday parties. Too. That's that's this weekend. Uh, four-year-old oh. birthday party up in Encino, a nice. scale model of a Barbie dream house. That's wow. Be interesting. <laughs> Impressive. There's a lot of pink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. Nice. Nice. So well, I went to college and then I went to grad school for theater. I wanted to do, um, I learned I wanted to become a stage manager and I wanted to work in music. Um, ideally musical theater. I fell mm. in opera because of Nixon in China at Long Beach Opera and have been doing opera for the past 14 years now, I think. So I am a stage manager, production stage manager. Primarily I call shows uh, and I also do production management, director of production work at a couple different companies. I prefer I prefer newer works. I like weird, obscure pieces. I like mm. working strange locations. My favorite is um, the catacombs inside the Greenwood Cemetery, which is a historic cemetery. Cool. Um, I also spend my summers working at a company that does, that is the Bel Canto company in the United States, which is like the most traditional opera you can do. So I go back and forth between traditional opera and obscure opera. Very nice. traditional versus very weird. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> Um, uh, Cindy, I heard, I heard that since quarantine, um, since you're not in opera uh, or doing opera live, um, you've been doing semi-virtual operas. How does that, how does that work? Uh, well, we're still working on, we're working on one. It's going to be a virtual reality opera mm -hmm. that's produced by Tri-Cities Opera and Lumen Projection Arts Festival in upstate New York. There cool. is the director of production at Tri-Cities for a few years and worked with Luma. So we're working with video um, video game designers to mm -hmm. elements and to rig them. We have live singers that are gonna be in motion capture suits that will be singing. And then they're acting to a camera and to a screen. So they're not actually going to be interacting with each other because mm -hmm. we wanna keep everybody apart. So they're, yeah. they can really be like 20 feet away from each other but acting with each other on mm -hmm. the screen. Um, and then it's being, sent through this device and with the orchestra and then into people's virtual reality headsets and projections, which is- Wow. So I've been doing that just as well as um, for my summer program, a lecture series with singers, which has been interesting because we're trying to do different singing techniques over Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, like voice, uh, the levels keep bouncing out and you mm -hmm. know, just figuring out how close to be to the, the mic and how far yeah. away in and stuff but yeah it's been an interesting process to to adapt everything yeah. to Zoom when you know it's not what any of us were trained to do so mm. yeah is it, are you calling that opera that virtual opera are you calling the show for that or i will be calling it yeah 
Um, I'll be actually going up there for it. So I'll be in the midst of all of the technology. Mm. Uh, and I believe the way that I actually have a meeting on Monday to figure this out. I think I will, I will have a score that will have all of the cues in it. Ideally, mm -hmm. just run through one program. Yeah. So like the lights, the sound effects, um, the transitions, everything through the computer and mm -hmm. I'll be hitting go on the board mm -hmm. as the flow goes through. Um, and then I'll have text with me who actually know the computer program and know, but because I'll know the show and I can read music and they can't, then I will yeah. be, I will be running it that way. So it's going to be really interesting to see how all of that works. Cause in my head, like, oh, it's a lighting cue, but to the computer, you know, it's like something that's going on in the computer that's making the lights change in the video game. So it's mm -hmm. really um, could, so, could you, could you explain what it means to call a show to a viewers? Ah, it's a good ooh, one. Yeah. So <laughs> in opera, in opera, we do it a little bit differently. In theater, you have your script, the things that the, the performers, the actors say, and then you write in, there's now technology where you can do it, but you write in literally like where the light cues happen, when lights change, where scene changes happen, where sound effects happen. In opera, we also send the singers on stage. So it's the assistant stage manager's responsibility literally to cue the singers to enter the stage. Um, and we call lighting uh, projection cues if we need it and stuff. So in opera, I'll have the score in front of me because I can read music and I have little dots, let's say for different things. So I use yellow dots for light cues, red dots for projections, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so headset with our light board operator, with our scenic crew, with our props crew, with the ASMs, um, and as the music goes, I can watch Maestro, I can hear the music, hear the singers, and just follow along and like call the cues. So yeah, stage manager, I'm the one that like makes this stuff happen on stage. Nice. That's very important as the tech people uh, running the boards and all, they don't necessarily know the show. So they don't know when a lighting cue needs to change. So they're not supposed to. Uh, mm -hmm. hit the go button, which it's physically a button that says go until Cindy or whoever stage managing says go. It's a, the go word mm -hmm. is a very big word. Yeah. <laughs> very, no, yeah very I've, important I've, word. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I've, I've messed up on that when I'm running, running the board, you know, waiting for that go and it's like, you know, hit too early or, you know, I got to wait right on that go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which, exactly. Yes. Um, yeah, during, during quarantine, um, you guys had started a theater podcast. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we actually started it almost three years ago now before quarantine even oh, wow. started. We've just been bumped up a lot during quarantine because <laughs> yeah. I've been sitting around at home. So um, I listen to d and I'm a big nerd and listen to Dungeons and Dragons podcast and mm -hmm. the Nerdist and things like that. And I was like, I should listen to a theater podcast. Mm -hmm. And so I got on, you know, three years ago and said yeah. theater podcast and I could find Broadway and I could find actors. And I was like, well, mm -hmm. I don't care about Broadway or actors. What about the rest of us? Exactly. So I called up Cindy and I said, Hey, we're starting a podcast. And she said, we don't know how to do a podcast. We don't have time to do a podcast. We don't even know what you're talking about. It took about two months and then we did a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we've been, we just did 102 episodes. Right, I think our hundred and second episode just came out last uh, Friday. Who's it? A hundred and three comes out tomorrow. Wow. Uh, so yeah, we've been doing that. They're about an hour long each. We talk to the people we know. We talk to the people we hear about. We talk to set designers and lighting designers and stage managers and. Um, we just talked to a playwright and a lyricist who's working on a musical, and wow. we talked to all the backstage people because. Nice there's a whole world of people who exist that are never seen on stage and a exactly. whole world of people who exist who are not on Broadway. In fact, 90% of the people performing and acting and in theater are not on Broadway. Uh, so yeah, that's, we've been doing that for a while now. Sometimes we get super busy and in tech and all that. And we, we were dark for a couple months and then quarantine happened. And now we're like, one or two a week <laughs> yeah yeah you have so much time now yeah however yeah. many cindy schedules that's how many we do <laughs> yeah <laughs> nice nice do you do you have a favorite topic you've discussed on the podcast so far uh, ooh, it's because well, they're so varied they are but one of my favorites and obviously it's because stacy and i are women um 
is to talk about that subject, to talk about how tech theater, especially Stacy's Stacy's world as a technical mm -hmm. director, is very male dominated. Very, yeah. I, I know three women technical directors, and even when you you walk into a scene shop, you know it's ninety percent men. You walk backstage mm -hmm. at most theaters, it's yeah. predominantly men, and so we often have those discussions with designers or with directors um, who are female because it just takes a little bit extra time to get what you need done. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's sure. a, a topic that comes up very often in our conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, a scenic designer who's very well known, works at all the A houses. And she said, she's just accepted the fact that it takes 45 minutes in the first day of the theater, 45 minutes to the first hour to just proof to the crew that she knows what she's doing, which wow. is a huge waste of time when you consider yeah. how much time you have in a theater, you know? And she was like, that's just what it is, you know? And you can mm -hmm. just like work that in. So yeah, yeah. yeah. every you know, new, every new theater I go to, every new shop I go to, I have to uh, prove I know what I'm doing and yeah. that I, um, sorry, I'm at work still. So I'm waving at people cleaning for COVID. Um, good. I have to prove that I know how to use a screw gun or that yeah. I even own a screw gun and that I can actually do things. And so once I like prove myself and they're like, oh, she can do that, then it's fine. <laughs> yeah. but then theater and I'm like, oh my God, yes, I know how to use a screw gun. Like yeah. in the back of my car with my saw, like it just lives mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Uh, where I still feel like guys don't necessarily have to usually do that, whether they know how to use a screw gun or not, you just assume mm -hmm. they do. Yeah, uh, exactly. So it is Which a little different doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, you know, it's, you know, that, that you know, that pe people think, you know, that, that women are not, you know, able to do, you know, you know, thing, things that men can do, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. But they um, learn. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Definitely. Um, let's see. Uh, do you guys have any advice for, for people who want to go into technical theater or stage management? Uh, I think one thing that we talked about on our podcast a number of times is uh, there is no one way. Like mm -hmm. Cindy went to grad school and got a degree in it from grad school. I did not go to grad school. Both of us are working full time. Both of us are doing what we want. Um, well, we were working full time. <laughs> we were working full time. Currently not quite working full time. Uh, mm -hmm. Still very busy, but not necessarily earning money. Um, but yeah, everybody, no two people have the same path. Some people go to college, some people go to grad school, some people go to college and then take a couple years off and then go to grad school. Some people uh, start as actors and move over to technical theater. Some people mm -hmm. knew they wanted to do tech from the beginning. I think the biggest thing is just continuing on with it yeah. and meeting people and being good to work with and being friendly to people because you never know when you're going to come back around and meet the same people. Exactly. I've worked with people in California and then three years later, Cindy will work with them out in uh, Omaha. Oh. And so you never know when they're going to come back around and who's talking to who. Uh, mm -hmm. Cindy has a quote from one of her teachers in, in college okay. that basically she said, you have to stay in the theater world for seven years. If you can make it seven years, then you're good. It's a long seven years. Yeah. And applying it's for jobs especially when you're still in school because I remember she told me this like you know my senior year of college and I was just mm -hmm. like God, how am I supposed to make it five to seven years that seems like such a long time period yeah and I made it to year five I think and that was when I first realized that I wasn't always the one having to go out and seek the jobs that I had made a name for myself enough that companies were like asking me or I was getting recommendations mm -hmm. And then it was seven years when I was offered my first like full year contract. So I was like, wow. oh, wow, that number actually works. But it takes mm -hmm. the long to make those connections and to really own your skills and figure out what it is that, you know, what your niche is, where you want to go. Yeah. And like Stacey said, the, the connections you make, you never know. You never know if that person that you're talking to at that moment is going to be the one that's going to change your career and change your life. For sure. Um, I can trace where I am now back to one person, uh, Darlene at Long Beach Opera, who just happened to take a chance on me and hire me for Nixon and China. And I've been doing opera ever since. And because of that, you know, I've 
and who knew, you know, I remember exactly where I was sitting when I took that interview. And now here I am, you know, working at, at large houses and getting mm-hmm. here or two out, you know, but you never know. It's, it's yeah. exciting and scary at the same time because you're like, <laughs> be, yeah. I mean, I'm coming to me or not, but yeah. they all know how important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's when networking is so important, you know, because, you know, the, mm-hmm. that connection of people, you know, people and jobs and all that, um, which, which is great. And, you know, it's, I, I think for young people like me, you know, networking obviously is important to, you know, get that, get that repertoire up. Though um, I do, because well, networking to me is such a scary word. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It I'm does, not going yeah, to a too. dinner party and dressed fancy and drinking wine. Like. Yeah. But what I tell <laughs> people is it's don't consider it networking. Think about it as just being yourself and being nice to people. Exactly. And you want to reach out to somebody, you know, if you become friends with them or just make a contact, you can reach out and be like, oh, hey, I saw that you have a dog. I like dogs too. Or, you know, yeah. like if you're sincere mm-hmm. and you're trying to find, you know, the next job and, and you're actually sincere and a nice person, that's what we consider networking. You know, it doesn't have mm. to be this like scary, intimidating thing because I still get intimidated by that word, but yeah, yeah. I, to people so yeah which which you know we, we, we you know which i'm i'm doing that now you know yeah. <laughs> yeah, i'm a good example of that we're on the podcast because yeah, john yeah. reached out and said yeah. hey do you want to be on the podcast yeah, because yeah. i met him i think i interviewed for the job and then i introduced him to your teacher and oh, yeah. then you got involved through that yeah, and exactly Exactly. So you never know like that one interview or that one person you talk to at a show where that leads to. For sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, it could, uh, Cindy, could you explain um, what a union is um, and what are the pros and cons of being in a union? Yeah, I belong to two unions. My first one is AGMA, which is American Guild of Musical Artists. It covers opera singers, um, ballet dancers, I believe, some circus people and some ice skaters. Mm-hmm. In AGMA, they also cover a lot of contracts will cover stage managers and directors and choreographers. Mm-hmm. Um, something, and then there, I also belong to Actors Equity, AEA or Actors Equity Association, which is straight shows and musicals. So it's mm-hmm. broad houses, all the Lord, ABCD houses. It's what, you know, the Geffen is on and, and a center theater group. Yeah. They're sister unions, so if you belong to one, you can easily join the other one. Equity is a lot more strict about, once you become equity, you can only work equity, whereas when you're AGMA, you can work AGMA contracts or non-AGMA contracts. Mm -hmm. The advantages of being union is that they have, they have stipulations is the right word, but not the word that I like as much, but they kind of have guidelines, like you have to make a minimum Contracts have to be a minimum amount of money. Um, equity, you have to have a, a both of them a certain number of breaks. You can't work more than you know six hours or eight hours in a day. Yeah. Twelve hour turnaround. Mm-hmm. Agma even does things like because it's so important for singers. Um, the temperature in a room has to be a certain degree. Oh wow! Or oh, within a within a range. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Within a range, yeah. It's like a eight eight degree range. You know, because singers, it's all about their voices, and if it gets exactly. Too hot, they, they can't perform. Yeah. So unions are important in that it does help take care of performers, take care of mm-hmm. state workers, make sure that you're not being taken advantage of. Uh, right now, equity especially, well, both of them are fighting really hard for, for coming back from COVID, you know? Yeah. In a situation where we're all very close together, we're touching each other, we're sharing dressing rooms, we're doing coaching mm-hmm. stage. Um, so what does that mean? And they're both unions are being very careful and they're talking to a lot of uh, scientists about what that means coming back um, mm-hmm. and how companies can be safe. So in those yeah. regards, both unions are, are very important. Did, were you in one unit and then you joined the other? Is that how that came about? For me, yes. I actually got, the funny story is I got my equity card first and then I didn't mm-hmm show for 12 years um (laughs) membership because i had it um and then i got my agma card after that i don't remember if i bought into it or if i was offered the agma contract first because with agma or with either one you can once you're in one you could just pay the initiation fee for the other one but i don't remember Mm -hmm. but 
I was yeah. equity first before my life took another turn and I ended up in opera. <laughs> yeah. But like on, on the flip side of that is uh, as a technical director, I don't have a union. They, yeah. they, it doesn't exist. Um, so I've never belonged to a union. I have worked in union houses, meaning um, a theater itself could be a union place and there's mm-hmm. different rules I have to follow when working there, yeah. uh, as opposed to non-union houses where I have a little more freedom to do things. Mm-hmm. Um, unions are also very strict on keeping their people employed and doing things. So if I am in a union house as a technical director, I can't work with lighting equipment. I can't touch it. Uh, so there's just different rules to do different things. Um, there are crew unions. They are IATSE. There's designer unions. Uh, mm-hmm. Just my field doesn't have a union. Yeah. So I've never, it's never been a thing for me to consider joining or not joining. Yeah, yeah for sure. St- Stace, do you, do you want to go into um, what, what a, what a, um, what a uh, TD does, a technical director does? Yes. Uh, I always tell people that um, I do everything backstage that doesn't necessarily deal with the actors. Cindy deals with the actors. I deal with everybody else. Mm -hmm. So I oversee the um, work with the set designer and lighting designer and prop master and all that and schedule the crew and work with the budgets, schedule the load in, schedule the strike, schedule the tech, uh, work with the stage managers to schedule tech. Uh, to make sure all the things going on behind the scenes are working uh, during, huh? And safe. And yes. safe. Yes. So safe a big, for, yeah. 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 Uh, I worry about, you know, if, if a platform is more than three feet off the ground, it has to have hand railing and the steps yeah, yeah. can't be too steep because actors, you know, will have a hard time running up and down them. And mm-hmm. If they're having a microphone, where when do they put on their microphone and where's the microphone and do yeah. they have all the batteries for the microphone? So I oversee all the crew and backstage people during tech rehearsals because uh, I worked in musical theater a lot. I ran the the tech rehearsals basically. Mm-hmm. I was the one being like, okay, during this scene change, these two crew members on stage right are moving this set piece to this mm-hmm. spike mark, making sure, okay, this is spiked right, so the lighting people know where to move the lights to. Yeah. And then working, telling the stage manager, okay, we're good, put the actors on stage. And then I still had the control of, I could call hold, or I could jump on stage and be like, you just got hit by a drop because you're not supposed to be there right now. Yeah, yeah. And making sure that- well, Hopefully the stage manager stops the drop before it actually- <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I, I had to like stand there and like, I jumped on stage once cause we just ran through this whole scene change. I think it was mm-hmm. like the music man, right? 15 yeah, things yeah. are going on and off stage. These big sets, we have 30 actors running around. Yeah. And we just said, okay, you enter through the second wing because I have a house coming in the first wing and I got a drop coming in right between the two of you. You've got to do this. And they mm-hmm. all said, yes. And I said, okay, reset, do it again. And like three people walked right under the drop and I had <laughs> oh, to gosh. stand there and I blocked the drop from hitting because the people on the fly rail couldn't see because another set piece was coming in. Oh, wow. And then That's I was crazy. like, if I didn't stop this with my hand, you guys all had like 200 pounds right on the top of your head. Yeah. What wing did I tell you to enter from? And they're like two, and I was like, then why are you in one? <laughs> yeah. Like, reset again. We're doing it again till you get it because I'm not going to be here during a show to make sure you don't get hit. <laughs> exactly. So that that's exactly. a lot of my job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it sounds like stage. It sounds like some of what a stage manager does, you know, in a sense. Exactly. Except she's watching from the front, and I'm yeah. watching from the back. True, you're right. Wouldn't the stage manager be from the in some shows the back too, right? She, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Opera, I always call opera always calls from backstage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is the is it so it's, it's different from for opera than theater than right? Okay. Cool. Well, I think it's also different depending on the house or the person. I've known stage managers on musicals who prefer to call backstage. Some prefer mm-hmm. to call in the front. Just yeah. It, 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 I think it's easier to see in the front, right? Because you see, you know, you see the stage from, yeah, right, yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, let's see. Let me see if there's any questions in the chat, real quick. Um, I don't think so. Um, do we guys in? We guys in anything when quarantine hit? Like shows or anything you were doing? Uh. I was, because now I'm working on red carpets, uh, I had just finished Mulan, 
uh, mm-hmm. on Hollywood Boulevard. And my another team in the company was just spent three days building out a massive install for Little Fires Everywhere mm-hmm. uh, premiere. Uh, we had five huge houses and it was, it took like three months to build and they were just finishing the third and final day of install when it got canceled. Mm -hmm. And then then they had to go in the next day and tear it all down without anybody ever seeing it. That's crazy. That's Um, (laughs) prep for Barbara's Villa at San Diego Opera. Mm -hmm. So uh, two weeks of prep before performers show up. Yeah supposed to fly to San Diego and then they're like oh this is you know some things are starting to get canceled mm-hmm. postpone your flight for a week but we're you know continue to prep so we we're prepping yeah. for home and the, the first week passed and they're like we're pushing it another week and that's when me and the, the team were like mm, we don't think this is happening and uh, yeah. then they ended up canceling it after that um we're not canceling they postponed it so they're gonna do it next season but yeah I was literally like sitting on my computer like prepping for the show when, wow. Yeah, she was supposed to fly out to California in three days when they, oh, wow. That's crazy. they pushed it. She would have been stuck out here with me. <laughs> I tried. I tried. My husband yeah. had to happen, but Damn him. <laughs> fly to California. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, that, yeah. Nice. You um Stacey, could you could you explain what, what red carpet is, working in red carpet is? Yeah. Or, uh yeah. so when you when a movie premieres or a TV show premieres or something, it's a big publicity press thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I'm sure everybody has seen the 500 reporters and who's wearing what and and they're all standing in front of a wall. Yeah. I work on building those walls. <laughs> 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 what graphic goes on it? How long is it? Um some are more simple. Some are just a big wall with a graphic on it. Uh, for mm-hmm. Mulan, we built out a whole front of the Imperial Palace. And so it was different layers and it had the weapons and it had gold oh, wow. and fabric draped everywhere and the pictures of all the lead actors and stuff. So I am in charge of the scenic portion of all that. There are other mm-hmm. people in my company and team who are in charge of like, what color is the carpet? And when is the carpet going to be laid down? And yeah. another group of people is worried about the lighting. And another group of people is worried about uh, the security. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when you, uh, I have spent no more time on Hollywood Boulevard in the middle of the night and watching the sunrise than most people probably do on Hollywood <laughs> yeah. Boulevard. Uh, Sober. Yeah. A lot of people probably do it while they're drunk, but. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've done, I've only been at this company for like, I think eight months now. But I was at the mm-hmm. premiere of Star Wars. I oh, wow. saw, um, I was working on the Star Trek, the Picard one. So I saw him. I nice. I held a curtain open for Will Smith to drive through for Bad Boys. That Dang. was pretty fun. Nice. Um, watching them try to drive Steven, up this Steven little Tyler, ramp. Come Steven Tyler. Um, yeah, ben- Benefit concert, uh, Janie's mm. Fund. And Steven Tyler walked by while I was putting in a bunch of uh, light bulbs into a candle, candelabras nice. to hang up or nice. chandeliers to hang up. So yeah, I'm still doing like scenic builds and drawings and technical drawings and loading and all that. Just mm-hmm. now actors take pictures in front of it instead of reciting lines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> budgets yeah. have the zeros on them. Budgets are a lot higher. Yeah, yeah for sure. Definitely. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, uh, Cindy, do you, do you have a favorite part of working in opera? I'd say listening to the singers. Sometimes she gets distracted yeah. and forgets to call cues because the guys are singing. Yeah. It's, it's baritones, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, tech is usually my favorite part. It's the part where you finally get to see everything come together. Mm-hmm. And especially if I'm the a PSM and have been working on a show for a year, you know, and you're in all the yeah. design talks and all of the prep, you know, and it's, it's something to see in rehearsal with all the tape on the floor and to see the first run through and to hear the mm-hmm. orchestra. And when you actually get to like tech and you get to see the lights and, and how the scene changes work and you see like, 80, 100 people coming together to create something. Yeah. Every single person has to do their bit. Otherwise, it'll sound funny. You know, like mm-hmm. if your bass player isn't there, thankfully I have really good bass players, then mm-hmm. it, you know, the, the whole thing sounds funny. Yeah. And so that's really my favorite part is tech and, 
and calling the shows because stage managers, even though we're considered tech, are also very artistic. You know, if, if sometimes you need to call a cue a, a breath earlier or on yeah. somebody's movement or anticipate something, and that's such an artistic decision you have to make. You know, if you call a bad show, the lights look bad, the scenery looks bad, you know, like yeah, yeah. we're very artistic. And so it's using my right side of my brain and my left side of the brain. And it's just such a, a family community feeling when when all of these people come together and, and you create something that is happening then and there and will never be recreated again. Even if you do the show 200 times, yeah. that specific time is going to be different than every other time. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Favorite part. Yeah, I, I I love I, that's why I love Wookie Tech because you know it's like you know the 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 I love you know the final final thing of it when you're coming together and it's like you you, you yeah. meet the people and you get you know the you know get to know the actors and just like it's all that all that amaziness and you become a family and like oh a, for sure you know, all of a sudden you guys are all best friends and yeah. I now have families all across the United States every time I go somewhere you know yeah, and yeah. so like Cece said you know she worked with someone in California three years later I was working mm -hmm. with them in Omaha it's just this like and we were still drinking, uh, I think, tequila. I think we yeah. had her on a podcast while you guys were out in Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just this like awesome family feeling that you get that Definitely. I think most jobs don't have. Like we all love what we do. We're mm -hmm. all this career that we love. Like we all love our jobs. And I don't know very many other people outside mm -hmm. of TV who say that, you know, they, yeah. they work because they have to. We work because we want to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we have a question from the chat. Mm -hmm. um, P3 Theater Company asks, Cindy, does calling a show cause anxiety? And if so, does it go away after doing tons of shows? Uh, no, no, it doesn't go away. I mean, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it is always a bit anxious. And I have to say the most anxious part, and I know a number of stage managers, it's the top of show and the end of show. Mm -hmm. because once the show starts, that's the part that I'm comfortable with. That's the part we've been running in rehearsals and we've teched. But in opera especially, you never get to tech the like house to half, speech, mm -hmm. uh, house and maestro. And maestro, uh, maestro light up, maestro light down, cue the yeah. orchestra, tuning. You know, there's like 30 cues that happen that you don't get to do until opening night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, if you have a long pause and the audience is sitting in dark, then you're like, what happened? If orchestra tunes and you're sitting in dark, you're like, where did Maestro go? You know, and so to me, that's super stressful. Once the show starts, I'm good to go. And then it's, yeah, yeah. it's always stressful because, again, you don't rehearse curtain calls. <laughs> you're yeah. like, done applauding? Are you not done applauding? I don't know what's going on. Exactly, Are you bowing yeah. again? <laughs> Are you holding the lights because you're bowing for the fifth time? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, that bit. Yeah. So I wouldn't See, I'm nervous, but there is always some form of like heightened realism. You know, there's mm -hmm. this, um, anticipation, this like excitement that comes along with it. I hardly ever call sitting down. I'm always like up and like bouncing and, and, yeah. and dancing with the music. So I guess I'm not nervous once it starts, but it, it's still a huge, huge thrill to, mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. But even even still, uh, her calling cues, she'll be focused uh, on. She miscalled a cue once, and she will sit at home with the video and rewatch that video during that and called it to herself in her head. I can't tell if she called it a breath off, but she'll be like, "Oh, last night I was just this far off." Yeah. And I'm like, well, "Okay." <laughs> yeah, it's it a nice second. Uh huh. The next night, she'll text and be like, "I got it," and I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> exactly. She's exactly. super excited. <laughs> yeah, my husband's like, "No one noticed," and I was like, "I noticed," and that director noticed, and the director uh -huh. was late. Exactly. So I it right. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, it, it's it's the mistakes you make, and then you know, like you know, no one else sees except you, you know, and you feel all self conscious about, it, and it's like you know, uh -huh. like, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Must be perfect so you know yes for sure for sure Stacey <laughs> did you get any of that that you know that anxiety with being a TD no because by the time the show opens my job's done yeah exactly. I, I don't even attend opening nights half the time because mm -hmm. by then like the tech should be solved I'm like yeah. at home yeah. the next day everyone's like yeah opening night and I'm like okay time to plan strike yeah like I, I don't yeah. I don't participate during any of the actual run of the show unless there's an emergency. And hopefully if I did my job right, there isn't an emergency. Yeah. So 
Cindy likes to watch the show 500 times. By the time I sit through tech, I'm done. <laughs> exactly. I don't yep. want to watch it anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Cindy, um, Cindy do, you have, do you have like a favorite opera you've done or you've put it stage managed? Uh, Nixon in China is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. I did it as a production assistant at Cincinnati. And then I was a production or the stage manager at Long Beach Opera. And that's probably why I'm in opera now is because that show was so amazing. Um, if you don't know it, there's like an airplane that comes on at the top of the oh, show. Wow. It's just a, a, a fun musical number to call. Mm-hmm. It's also a new work with, it's uh, Philip Glass, right? No, uh, John Adams. John Adams. This one is, is Philip Glass. They're both um, composers that I really enjoy. And I've done Hydrogen Jukebox twice, which is Philip Glass. And yes. that's an amazing one. The other one, I guess the other one that I loved the most was um, the shortened version is Burke and Hare at Boston Lyric Opera, mm-hmm. a premiere that I did two and a half years ago. And it was just so much fun. The, the performers were all really amazing. I had a really mm-hmm. good stage management team. Um, it was just an amazing show. It was one of those shows where every night I just felt so privileged to be sitting there. Like I would have to pinch myself to be like, I'm literally getting paid to listen to these like world class musicians play. Yeah with world-class designers I'm watching a show for free and they're literally paying me for this you know like yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just it, it was such an amazing experience and that was a show that I practiced a lot you know because we had so many bump cues that like we wanted to time perfectly um we had mm-hmm. projections that had to line up with it perfectly it was it was a really really fun show to call I like I the bet, yeah challenging shows so those are all mostly newer works but nice did you like to color code your script and you know like the you know, colors I and always like, color code my script it's yeah. like it's a rainbow in there yeah, yeah um yellow is always light most stage managers i know is like that um mm-hmm. green is usually scene changes red is usually projections orange or pink are usually um spotlights i know i'm missing the one when i cue singers um, I actually do it by different colors for different sides of the stage. Mm-hmm. So that's, uh, what side performers have to come in on. Yeah. Usually I use circles for goes and, and square sticky notes or, or rectangle sticky notes for my standbys. So it's just this <laughs> yeah. in my square. Yeah. That way I can just glance at it and know like, you know, oh, it's a standby. Oh, it's a light cue. Mm-hmm. Um, Office Depot, yeah. uh, I have bought her so many Christmas presents. Like I bought you a packet of sticky notes and she <laughs> is so excited about it. Bought you me a sharpies. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. She bought me a whole pack of like gaff tape and spike tape one year. It was like 10 different kinds of spike tape. And mom oh, was wow. like, Are you sure that's what she wants? Tape? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's I, gonna be so excited about this tape. <laughs> that's great. I love that. That's amazing. That's so funny. <laughs> they used like you should get tape for, spike tape for Christmas. And it's like, this is what I wanted. And your parents are like, what? <laughs> you know, like your friends are like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, last year she, yeah last year she wanted a tape dispenser and a bunch of scotch tape yeah yeah i think her husband bought her like 12 packs of scotch tape well yep. wow that, that's yeah, you know it was a costco thing it was huge <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Well, costco is like huge anyway you know because you know, like, uh-huh. everything's just giganto is why it's called costco because what does even costco stand for i don't even know what costco stands for no idea whatever massive everything <laughs> something <Yeah>. whatever <laughs> uh okay um, is um, as we wrap it up here, um, is there anything you would like to promote about yourselves or social media as we can guys we can follow you on? Uh, well, we do have the podcast, uh, Twins Talk Theater. Uh, we have it's it's on Facebook, it's on Instagram. We have a web page on Podbean at Podbean dot uh, Both of us are on Facebook. Uh, Cindy's on Instagram under Cynthia. I run mostly the podcast one. Uh, we both have web pages, which is our full name, Stacy Hinnenstone, and I think yours is Cynthia, right? Cynthia Hinnen Marie S M. So we can, you know, find us all over the place. Yeah, that's nice. It. Not, neither yeah. of us really yeah. do Twitter. Uh, I, mean, yeah, I don't do Twitter either. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah, I do Instagram and Facebook. I recently got Facebook because why not? It's like I'm bored, you know. <laughs> why not? <laughs> you know, 
it's not for me it's not it's not my generation but it's like exactly whatever. it's ours yeah. it started when we were both in college well obviously because we're twins but uh I, I think i made her get that i, I started remember. but my school had it first yeah yeah and then she uh, made me get it and then i made her get instagram so nice. it's a balance nice nice but uh but again thank you guys so much for joining me today and it was yeah fun talking to you it was fun to be on this side i didn't know what questions were coming or what we yeah. were gonna do yeah 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 it's, it's a surprise <laughs> every day you know excellent good job yes. yeah thank you thank you guys and uh tune in next next week for uh our next episode of uh tech talk with ethan and thank you again thanks bye, bye. 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 bye.